Welcome to the Unquestioned Podcast with Louis de Baarde and Willem Himpen. And now we're ready on episode 11. But first of all, Louis, why are you in the cloud? What's happening over there? You're my little money boy. <laughs> this is where I feel at home. That's just uh, how I roll. Is that your new apartment or what? Are you suddenly uh, a millionaire? What did you do? You invested in some crypto? Because... <laughs> <laughs> I want to know that one because most of uh, most of the cryptos I know are down. Yeah, if I did, you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't tell anyone, yeah. especially not on a podcast. <laughs> Probably done with the episode. Uh, waterfall uh, and agile. These are two different project management uh, methodologies. And maybe let's kick off with some definitions, Louis. Um, what is the difference between these two? Yes. Um, Agile is the most recent approach and because it came as a reaction to um, the drawbacks of the waterfall. And yeah, Agile is a lot safer uh, because it's iterative and incremental and you get feedback more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, there's still projects that use the, the waterfall approach, which is uh, also commonly called the 1.0 release, where you prepare everything um, upfront and you only release to your customers when the whole thing is done compared to um, the agile way where you try to um, uh, step by step um, ship improvements and get feedback early um, and keep building and building and building while your users are already using your product. What I actually see is that agile is a in my opinion a better method because you can constantly iterate over better and better version of your software uh, or your hardware um, where waterfall is kind of it, it takes so much time to get feedback from your customers so you could put in a lot of resources without actually knowing that your product or service will work do you agree on that or do you say totally still waterfall has a lot of value uh, here in 2023 and is here to stay i totally agree uh, it really depends on um on the type of product you're shipping, because yeah, sometimes it's not not possible to to give users um, these uh, incremental improvements because uh, when you're working with hardware, you just can't afford to make all these uh, changes. You need to decide, and sometimes you have long uh, lead up uh, times, long loading times. So it's really software that enabled us to uh, move this quickly, to have this quick feedback loop, this uh, quicker turnaround time. Uh, so yeah, when you can, you should definitely uh, try to do it. Yeah, I was now thinking maybe for the listeners, an easy example for a waterfall would be like a, a construction uh, project while you're building um, a building. It's not really handy that every uh, single brick or little uh, changes in the rooms or in the structure and so on. No, it's set beforehand, planned every single step uh, until the end. Uh, of the when the full construction uh, or a whole full project is actually done and and with uh, software that's of course uh, not really helpful if they do it that way maybe um, a question uh, for you um, how does the agile methodology handle delivery and deployment because with waterfall it's very straightforward that day is going to be yeah. the release but Put it on the agenda, deadline. Correct. Yeah. We'll make a big <laughs> event out of it. We'll do a party, we'll, we'll get drunk and so on. But with Agile, you can't literally, like every day you update your software, have a big party and uh, <laughs> let's say celebrate the the small, uh, the wins. So what is your opinion about yeah. that? Yeah, that this is a, an important aspect, uh, the deadline, exactly. Um, with Agile, you don't really have that. Because what you try to do is, uh, like in the extreme version, back in the days, uh, there was something called extreme programming. Mm -hmm. And the deal was your project still needed to build um, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that means you start working <laughs> and your project like is in a certain state that is fine. Uh, you want to make a change? Well, don't break too much because uh, tonight it should still uh, be working uh, fine. So that's kind of the opposite of what you expect of this uh, big 1.0 release. Like uh, the project is like under construction for weeks. No, no, no. Try to uh, make small 
safe changes that are can easily be reverted and tested. Mm-hmm. And a good example of this is uh, the apps we use on our on our phone. Uh, if you pay attention to the uh, app updates, they don't really have informative descriptions anymore. It's not like uh, YouTube or Google Maps um, say, ah, we have this cool new feature. No, it's always usually the same description because they got tired of it. They they will actually update their apps every week, not because it's necessary to update them, just because they integrate everything they can mm-hmm. while the app still works mm-hmm. and give it to you on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. So they just um, they integrate as much as they can into the app right uh, up front. Yeah. And then maybe they only kind of make a big deal out of it when there's a major partnership or a major uh, change in the app because otherwise software is so easy, like the agile method to iterate over and to renew for the the consumer it would be chaos or too much information overload if constantly you get a notification with uh, update and changes uh, of your of this product that they have mm. yeah uh, the fiction is it, it, it's not because you're doing um, a big uh, making a big change uh, 1.0 release that it has to be released all at once so uh, if you're uh, doing um, like changing an engine, for example, like you would change the engine of a car, you can change um, the engine in an app, like a game engine or mm-hmm. something like that, you can still release that incrementally. Mm-hmm. So um, what companies do is they will have a, what we call a feature flag, mm-hmm. uh, which is basically just an option that says on or off, mm-hmm. enable this change, And uh, at first, it's off by default, so nobody gets the change, but it's already in the app. Yeah. And then you can slowly, incrementally roll, roll it out. So you can say, I want to release this to, let's say, 1% of customers, and then 1% will already get this big change. Mm. Or you could limit it to a specific country um, or specific type of, uh, uh, of users. So that's, that's a way to, to make a big change and not have it break uh, for everyone yeah because because you're doing that for example releasing that for only one percent and put it default on you kind of get already a lot of use cases or a lot of uh, errors and stuff happening and eventually exactly. you increase yeah. it step by step and at the end you say like now we're like 99 confident this feature is working well and then they release it uh, and make it the default option for everyone and that's that's quite interesting Maybe. And most importantly, you can still disable it. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Um, but maybe another question. In hardware, do you have an example where a hardware company uses the agile method? Because I, I would be thinking it, uh, it'd be difficult mm-hmm. for, let's say, a, a phone builder to constantly ask for your phone back and uh, do some changes and then <laughs> return it. Um, do you know in a, a company that does this? Yes, uh, a big tech, uh, big tech hardware manufacturer jumps to mind. Tesla, mm-hmm. the um, the only new new uh, player in the car business in the last 50 years. So that, I mean, they they must break uh, with some of the traditional rules, and they do. Uh, something um, the Tesla com- community knows is if you decide to order a Tesla car in January. Um, or your friend does order a car and you wait a few months um, and you order it six months later, it's possible that the exact same model with the same specs of the car will have slight differences. So Tesla does, for example, they will um, make an adjustment to the lights, but to the physical components of the car, to um, uh, the door handle or something. Uh, it's possible you notice small changes. So they do um, also have this Um, approach so uh, pay attention um, to uh, yeah people that have a slightly different variance of uh, of the same car essentially yeah. they collect a, like they release let's say the new model 3 they collect a lot of data from customers what they like and don't like like oh there's really no buttons I want a button there uh, and it keeps coming back then they'll change it in the next uh, release of car but it's it's much more quicker instead of every five years or they make one model and it stays like that. And that's kind of nice to hear. And the opposite actually, is there an example um, of software 
who actually normally always done agile, but does it uh, in a waterfall uh, project management way. Um, yeah, uh, the, the, the waterfall approach is not that far from it. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, the very big player, um, Apple, which is famous for their um, yearly events. Uh, you can almost like set your calendar to it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always an iPhone in September. Um, and uh, software release for the iPhone, their operating system, iOS, is always announced at WWDC, their Worldwide Developer Conference, in June. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a, a, a like a big 15.0, 16.0 release. Like it's iOS 14, 15, 16. Um, and the reason they do that in June is so they have the whole summer to beta test that operating system. Mm -hmm. So by the time uh, the iPhone is ready in September, the bugs are ironed out and everything is um, is tested and ready for the new iPhone. So that's an example of the whole organization um, from like January onward, like, you know, okay, we're on to the next big release. Um, what's what's going in the next big release? Okay, preparing everything for that. Um, and then in June, it's released as a beta. We They announce the features to the press. Uh, certain uh, users also get to test it. And then in the se September, it's, it gets released, hopefully with a minimum amount of bugs, and then the whole cycle starts uh, starts over. Yeah. Another example um, I was thinking of as well is a is a FIFA game, um, mm -hmm. the console where it's actually they, for example, they launch new f every year. That's like their iPhone moment, the new FIFA of the next year, and then it's a lot of marketing and hype around it around that one uh, release date. And often, for example, then all the players want to know which new rating they're going to get. Um, yeah. And you would, could say like, oh, it's software, it's a game. They could constantly upgrade a uh, player is injured, uh, get that person out of, out of uh, the FIFA game, but they don't do it. They, they use kind of the waterfall method, um, I think as well for marketing reasons, but as well to kind of um, get everything uh, done uh, with one set uh, date in mind and make it... Uh, like one point of release to the world, let's say. Um, another uh, thing I wanted to ask you to uh, wrap up uh, this episode is, are there things actually at Spotify where they do um, waterfall method um, and agile method? Probably most of it is agile, if I, if I think so, but are there as well certain waterfall aspects to your job or to the company Spotify? Yeah, if you have a look at our um, App Store page and you look at the, the release notes with all the history, um, you will see uh, a clear pattern that's uh, that's popular uh, amongst um, mobile apps is we have the same uh, uh, App Store description every time. It's just a piece of copy that says, hey, we're updating the app every time, bug fixes, stability. Um, so yeah, that means we're... Um, we're on this release stream where we, on a weekly basis, integrate whatever is ready, whatever is done and reasonably tested, um, goes into the app. Mm -hmm. And then bigger changes, um, we use uh, uh, feature flags for that, like uh, other big companies do. Uh, so that means um, on the, the back end tied to your, to your account, we will enable and disable uh, certain big features based on, on where you are. Or um, yeah, if you're a part of a test okay. experiment or not. Okay, nice. Yeah. Well, um, what I could share with the audience is, from a startup perspective, waterfall is not really done. <laughs> uh, it's all as agile <laughs> and constantly you listen to customers and you try to uh, change uh, everything uh, along the way because definitely if you don't have a product market fit, which uh, means kind of you can't keep up with the demand for your product or service, then it's not really valuable to wait very long uh, until you get uh, customer feedback like waterfall uh, methods. So that's maybe something interesting uh, to share with you guys. To wrap up this episode, I would as well want to uh, have a little tweet that's in the same kind of space, which is from Brad Adock, which is a very um, well 
uh, accomplished uh, CEO or founder. He founded three different companies, uh, Figure, Archer, and Vettery, which is Vettery is an online marketplace. Archer is an aerospace uh, company. And now he's, uh, as well as newest, is around AI robotics. So very uh, hardware focused lately. And his tweet says, in hardware development, your level of product design accuracy needs to be extremely precise. You need to know three years into the future exactly what you need to build today. I've observed great lessons you can take from hardware designs to traditional agile software startups. So um, maybe you can give your uh, opinion or maybe this already shows a lot of things that we've said today in the episodes that are true in the in the real hardware hardware world or what is your opinion yes Gr great summary uh, hardware is hard um <laughs> it's just in intimidating uh, uh i don't have much experience with it but i just I'm, I'm i'm glad i get to work with uh software where i can do a thousand um iteration a day um compared to hardware which takes uh so much longer uh, to do, but again, if you have a um, a working product, it's also harder for competitors to to get into the same space uh, and have uh, you know suppliers and manufacturers and stuff. So, correct. Um, it also has a has a good side. Yes, I would say as well. Uh, hardware is extremely hard, but it's difficult for competitors to. Uh, it's hard for them as well to copy you, but in, in software, yeah. uh, it's softer to copy <laughs> uh, your company. I'm sorry for the bad <laughs> jokes. <laughs> I need to work on it. Please don't cancel me for my terrible jokes. But it's easier to copy. Um, but as well, the iteration, uh, iteration over different product version is extremely quicker than in hardware. So, voila, that was episode 11 of the Unquestioned podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Louis, you as well. Um, yep. And definitely, I would say, enjoy uh, the skyline over there. <laughs> because <Will do. laughs> it's amazing over there, probably. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Unquestioned Podcast, I guess. Right. Ciao. Yes. Bye-bye. See you in the next episode.